Hey, Dave, I'm really excited about the guest today. It's someone different than a different type of person that we've ever had on the show before. I think uh, that's I, I think that's that's a, the understatement of the year, my friend. Yeah. And the year is and young, it, but still. Yes. It's the understatement yes, that's of the true. Year. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to, I mean, you know, this guy's got a cause that he's been fighting for for 20 plus years and had some great success fighting this battle. And we're going to try to drill down and see, answer the question, if you will, what can we do to help fight this battle to help small businesses all over the country? Yeah, I like it. That's 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 what it's all about, man. That's yeah. that's what this episode is all about. So it is. Go. Yeah. 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 Got it. I'm, I'm, if you're ready, I'm ready to small business, ready to go. I'm ready to small business, man. That is Shannon Jean. This is Dave Hamilton. <laughs> and this is Small Business Show 317. Dave, you know, like we always talk about, and especially I always, I really feel strongly that small business owners are just kind of on the front lines, you know, fighting battles just to survive, find success, especially in this last year, and also to get their voices heard, you know. And I've mentioned a few times on the show, I always get frustrated when large companies seem to get special treatment or exemptions from laws, and they have resources to kind of pressure politicians and things that us little guys don't. Uh and, and thankfully, there are groups and individuals that are passionate about helping those small businesses out. And I, we have one of those gentlemen here today. I'm excited to have the founder and president of the American Small Business League on the show with us. Lloyd and the ASBL, these guys are just tireless champions uh, of promoting and protecting small businesses, exposing problems with and impacting change when it comes to small business owners and government contract allocations. Lloyd, I'm really happy to have you here. Thanks for joining us today. Well, thanks for having me. It's a pleasure to be with you. Yeah, we're excited. So talk about a little bit, you know, as I mentioned before we started recording the show, the more I kind of looked into it, I was like, man, the depth of your background and the ASBL, it's impressive. What prompted you to start you know, the small business league back in, you know, all the way back in 2002. Fear. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great answer. Yeah. We, we often say on this show to avoid fear-based decisions, but this one, I think we're going to, we're going to have the exception that proves the rules. So there you go. Yeah. Yeah. We were losing, uh, I, I worked for a small IT firm in uh, Novato, California, hmm. and we were losing federal small business set-aside contracts. Now, a, a small business set-aside contract is a, a special uh, program uh, where they only bid things out to small businesses. And okay. we were losing $1,000 small business set-aside contracts to a company in Amsterdam that had 26,000 employees around the world in 28 countries. Oh, wow. And uh, one night I was walking out the door, I saw a computer that was still on. And I went down there and just thought I would look at the Small Business Administration's database of small business. It was called ProNet. And I found thousands of the biggest companies on earth in the SBA's um, database of small businesses. And um, I called everybody on the planet I could think of. Finally, the Government Accountability Office returned my call. I sent them all this information and they launched a six month investigation and they found um, 5,300 and something large businesses in the government's database of small businesses. There was a congressional investigation. There was a hearing. I testified for Congress. Associated Press wrote a story about it. Um, Larry Markasek from Associated Press. It ran all across the country. And I thought that that was the end of it. I was wrong. <laughs> the the problem is worse today than it was, and that was gosh, that was two thousand and two thousand, I think. Wow. Yeah, two thousand. So yeah, it was, it was twenty one years ago. It's worse today than it was twenty one years ago. Wow. So these these large large companies were basically gaming the system to get access to these contracts that were supposed to go to small businesses. Is that right? Well, I would say that the federal government, um. I want to say the word conspired because it's illegal 
with the big businesses to hijack the small business contracts. And it was a win-win situation. It allowed Fortune 500 firms to um, um, land, you know, hundreds of billions in federal, you know, contracts. And it allowed the federal government to um, fabricate compliance with the congressionally mandated 23% small business contracting goal. So it was a win-win. Why know, didn't it, they want to give these to small businesses? Was it just more work on their end so they could just kind of give it to their their buddies that they knew? Or, uh, well, you know, you there's know, like, there's a lot of reasons. My, my father was a contracting officer for the Air Force when I was uh, younger. And in the government, there's kind of a, um, oh, gosh, I want to call it almost like racism. There's like an anti-small business uh, sentiment uh, wow. throughout the government with government contractors. They don't like the fact that there's a federal law that requires them to uh, – work with small businesses and they're just sort of a, a bias against small businesses. Also, if you're if you're a federal contracting officer, what you want to do is do your 20 years and then retire and go to work for some big government contractor. Uh, right. And that's, you know, so they want to give those contracts to companies that they can, you know, go to work for and then retire after, you know, 20 years there, right? Oh, that may I mean it like I'm not okay with it, but it doesn't surprise me. And it makes sense, right? Like the system is set up a certain way and right. there's people in the system. And as soon as you put human nature inside of those people and look at the way that the system is set up, of course, this is what's going to happen. Yeah. Right? I mean, like, it, I'm, I'm, like I said, I'm not, I'm, I'm certainly not in support of it, but I'm definitely it. not shocked. Yeah. By exactly. It. Yeah. It's just I, how I it think, goes. Um, you know, I think people, here's some, I'll throw some numbers that might surprise your listeners. Um, the first one, the Small Business Act that mandates that 23% of all federal contracts go to small businesses, that's the largest economic stimulus program in history. Nothing has ever huh? come close to that for the, for the American people, right? Uh, under the uh, Troubled Asset Relief Program, they allocated $1 billion to small businesses. Under the American Reinvestment Recovery Act, they, they allocated $2 billion. If the federal government were to give small businesses 23%, it would be over $350 billion a year. It would slash unemployment and double the number of net new jobs that are created in America every year, but um, you know they're they're just they're just not doing it. they're just not doing it. Um, well, it's better to, better to fuel that money right into middle management where it where it goes to die, right? Yeah. Well, <laughs> here's some other numbers I'll I'll tell your listeners. Um, over eighty nine percent of all companies in America have less than twenty employees. And those companies are responsible for over 97% of the net new jobs in America. So uh, small business is responsible for half the gross domestic product, half the private sector workforce, and over 90% of all U.S. exports. So um, small businesses are the engine of our nation's economy, not Fortune 500 firms. Now, here's another number that'll, that'll shock. You're preaching to the choir here, Lloyd. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> Fortune 500 firms haven't created one net new job in over 40 years. And many of them that are major government contractors pay no federal income tax. So based upon all the data that I can obtain and the smartest lawyers that I can find that are familiar with the federal contracting law, 97% of all federal spending goes to less than 1% of U.S. firms today. That's happening right now. Wow. So let me, that, that, this, maybe this helps to explain why, but I have, I have a question. How difficult, let's, I'm a small business owner. Let's say whatever service I provide is something that would fit into what the federal government needs. And so how difficult is it both for me and for my handler in the government on that side, how difficult is it for us to onboard my small company as a federal contractor so that I can begin providing this service versus already go, going to a fortune you know 100 company that's already got a contract with the federal government and there's there's no friction. So what does that friction look like for Dave that doesn't have a contract? Well, you can go to um, fbo.gov. It's a website fbo.gov. Yeah. And that's that's all the um, goods and services government is purchasing. Plus, you can call, you know, the SBA. They should help you. That's their job. That's why they're there. No, I mean, like how what, what's the what's the time frame of. OK, so like let's say they picked me. Right. So, somehow I, I, I made it. I ran the gauntlet. I made it to the other side. Now they picked me. What what if anything? Maybe there's not a huge process, but I'm assuming there is. 
what's the process like to turn me into a vendor and approve me as a vendor for the federal government once they've already decided to work for me? Because I've dealt with this with large companies, right, where it's a big pain in the butt to to get in their system so that they can then work with me. Uh, is, is that difficult with the government, too? Or am I making a, the wrong assumption? You know what? It is. And I'll have to say that's by design. Yeah. I can say that absolutely. So the federal government uh, tries to put as many obstacles as they can to um, make it hard for small businesses to get, to get contracts. This is going to sound surprising to people. Before I tell you this, let me just say this. I'm 71. I've won 110 lawsuits against the federal government for over 32 years. My win ratio is 98.5%. The United States government is viciously anti-small business, wow. viciously anti-small business. So yeah. Um, yeah. there are over 30 million small businesses in this country. They're the heart of the nation's economy. And there's one agency to help those companies. It's the Small Business Administration. That agency has essentially been closed. That agency's budget today is $700 million. Um, when Reagan was president, I think it was $2 billion. So with normal inflation, today the SB budget should be $4 billion. It's $700 million. You can't run a federal agency on $700 million. Let's think of it this way. 99% of all U.S. firms have uh, less than 500 employees. Only 1% have more than 500 employees. So the agency that helps that 1% is the U.S. Department of Commerce. Their budget is $10 billion a year. So the agency that represents the 1% of companies has a $10 billion budget. The agency that represents the 99% where most Americans work has $700 million. So the Small Business Administration has essentially been shuttered. Yeah. yeah. All right. So <laughs> I, I am, if I may, Shannon. Yeah, of course. <laughs> yes, you may. <laughs> um, I, I'm, a, I, I'm sorry to obsess about this, but, you know, I'm, I'm a small business owner and therefore I'm just a problem solver at heart. Right. And I love to solve problems because it's, it's what's kept me in business. And so I'm looking at this and I know this friction must exist and you're confirming that it exists. So wouldn't it, and, and if the friction exists, that makes it difficult for me to become a vendor with the small, with, with the government as a small business, then that friction also exists for whoever it is that's on the government payroll that has to, you know, shepherd me through that process and they don't want to do it. Right. And so that person wants to just go with, with the fortune 100 company that's already got, you know, is on board as a vendor. It's easy. They just sign the deal and they're done. Wouldn't it, be that that would that piece of friction, if we could somehow eliminate that and make it easy to onboard any company, including small businesses, wouldn't that be the, the first step we'd want to take to solve this problem? You know, uh, that would help, but I don't know how you would do that. I, oh, uh, I don't know how either. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm just I the think, idea guy here. <laughs> yeah. I think the easiest thing to do would be for the American people to um, realize they're being cheated out of about $350 billion a year. In the last 48 months, um, the middle class has been cheated out of about $1.2 trillion in federal contracts. That would have created millions of jobs. People should be outraged. I see people protesting all kinds of things on TV. The thing they should be protesting is the middle class economy is being devastated by corrupt government officials and greedy Fortune 500 firms. And um, I hope that President Biden, you know, does something about that. Um, if he doesn't, I think we're in serious, you know, trouble. But uh, people, quite right. frankly, um, if you watch the national media, they never mention small businesses. They virtually never mention it. And I'll tell you something. I've never, ever seen anybody on national television talk about the fact that small business is responsible for about 99 percent of all the net new jobs. I've never heard that That's true. on television. Okay, yeah. so, yeah, and and I love this. I, I do want to ask one question. I want to talk more about what you do and uh, what the ASPL and how you do it. But I also don't want to uh, miss this opportunity to ask a question for someone who's, you know, started this organization and, and has had so much success over the past couple of decades uh, trying to, you know, effect positive change for small business owners. How did you go from, you know, where there's some key things of going from this idea of, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to start this organization and we're going to help these small businesses to, you know, starting to see success and really what action, what, what things did you do to create this organization that you can look back on now and share those tactics with our listeners? 
You know what? I, I did a lot of um, public relations, a lot of phone calls. Um, I used to have a young lady working for me full time. They would just call um, the um, bookers on all oh. the TV news program and uh, tell them I was available to discuss, you know, small businesses and the economy and jobs and things of that nature. And I got a lot of um, a lot of media out of that. I used to blog on a, a lot of different websites, but I, I guess, you know, the biggest thing was when I called the government accountability office and got that first investigation and the Associated Press uh, wrote that story about it. And then from then, journalists, you know, from around the country started calling me. And you were I, the expert. You were the small business yeah. expert, right? Well, yeah. I think something yeah. interesting. Um, I shouldn't be, but but the the um, I hired a, a famous journalist about two years ago, Daniel Zwerdling, to do some research, and he came back and told me that when he looked at Lexus Nexus, um, I remember telling him, I said, I, I bet my media footprint is 10 times larger than all the other alleged small business advocates in America combined. He said, no, your media footprint is 100 times larger. Wow. Uh, you know, there are 1,300 uh, hits on my name on LexisNexis. I've done more TV, radio, um, issued more press releases, written more blogs, written more legislation than every other small business group in America combined. And that shouldn't be that way. Now, if anybody um, doubts that, um, here, to the first one of your listeners that can find the president of any group in Washington claims to represent small business in the last decade on national television objecting to the diversion of federal small business contracts to Fortune 500 firms, I'll give them $1,000. Find anybody that, that is the president of any group in Washington, D.C. that claims to represent small businesses on national television objecting to the diversion of billions a year in federal small business contracts to Fortune 500 firms, I'll send you $1,000. All right. You heard it here oh, first. Goes feedback. in the show notes. So, feedback at businessshow.co. That's right. Yeah. 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 You can't do it. You can't. Yeah, do it. There's, there's nobody. So, so the law is 23%. Is that right? 23%, 23%. of all contracts. Yep. And has that ever been met? No. Here's what they do. Um, I've got a legal opinion from Professor Charles Tiefer, who's the nation's leading expert on federal contracting law. He was the attorney for the House of Representatives for over a decade. President Obama appointed him to serve on the commission to investigate spending in Iraq and Afghanistan. This guy is the Albert Einstein of federal contracting law. And he wrote a legal opinion um, about a year ago that says the acquisition budget that should be used to calculate the 23% is over $1.5 trillion. Another expert I know, Ashok Mahan, has a company in D.C. called FedMine. He agrees. He says it's possibly up, up to $2 trillion. The Small Business Administration, to fabricate compliance with the goal, excludes over a trillion dollars a year in federal acquisitions from those calculations. And then they add in billions uh, in contracts that were awarded to Fortune 500 firms and their subsidiaries. So the goal has been fabricated oh, for as long I as I can remember. So uh, they'll come out uh, in late summer and claim that they hit the goal. And uh, I think last year they said it was, they, they, they gave small business 25% and it was about 110 billion. Uh, that means they're using a federal acquisition budget of around 485 uh, billion. Well, the acquisition budget is three times that. It's, it's over yeah. 1.5 trillion. So small business should be getting about uh, 350 billion a year. I'll tell you something interesting. The House Small Business Committee did a study a few years ago that said for every 1% contracts of small businesses went up, it would create 100,000 net new jobs. So based upon all the research, all the data, it looks like small businesses are getting 3%, not 23. If President Biden would issue an executive order, make it mandatory for all federal agencies to hit that 23% goal, that would be an additional 20%. And according to the Senate Small Business Committee, that would create uh, two million net new jobs, that would virtually double the number of jobs that America is creating on an on a annual basis. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, so, and, and it, it's this is like a bipartisan problem, it sounds like. It doesn't matter who's in office or what who's in charge. It seems well, to just keep going, right? What I like to say is cheating small business is a bipartisan issue. <laughs> <That's true. laughs> yeah. It's gone, think, on. Yeah. It's gone yeah. on since Reagan. And uh, I worked on Obama's campaign. And I met with them 
I endorsed him. He put my endorsement on the front page of his campaign website. He um, issued a press release that I wrote. And the last sentence was, it's time in the diversion of federal small business contracts to corporate giants. Um, during his administration, it just got worse. Wow. It just got worse. And um, in fact, um, this is something that got very little coverage in the media. Obama tried to close the SBA. He tried to close it by combining it with the Department of Commerce. Well, that has been um, when people want to close the SBA. Reagan tried it in 84, 85. Um, they, the way they close it is to combine it with the Department of Commerce. Well, Obama tried the same thing, and I was able to stop him with the help of um, Public Citizen. Okay. Alphamators Group, they issued a report called Slighted that talked about how the government was uh, cheating small businesses. And that came out about two days before Obama was going to have a uh, uh, national uh, meeting to announce, you know, combining the SBA Department of Commerce. Combining the SBA Department of Commerce would be like combining the Ku Klux Klan and the NAACP, <laughs> right? right? You got the group that represents um, the largest business in America that hates small businesses and the agency that represents, you know, small businesses, it would be ridiculous to combine them. It's like combining NASA and the U.S. US Forest Service, right? But um, yeah, every president, I'll have to say, except Clinton, Bill Clinton was super pro small business. He was really amazing. And I knew some people that were on his staff. Um, Jerry Glover um, was head of the SBA Office of Advocacy. And Jerry, Jerry Glover was a major uh, force in in helping small business during the Clinton years. But there's a lot of pressure, you know, when you're president or you're in Congress, there's tremendous pressure oh, sure. to close the yeah. SBA and end those programs for small businesses to try to cover up these decades of fraud. And um, yeah. I've yeah. So, a- okay. So what, what are the typical arguments? And, you know, you've got all this press coverage you focused on with you and the ASBL, you're making all these great connections and everything. Uh, so, T- t- two two questions really what kind of arguments do you get of why this is still going on and what would what is the number one thing we can do us today dave and i and our listeners the thousands and thousands of small business owners that are listening today so to two parts you know what what do they say when you confront them with this and what can we do to help well um so this this came out 21 years ago and every year for 21 years, when it is exposed that the SBA is cheating small businesses and diverting small business contracts to Fortune 5 firms, they say the same thing. Miscoding. Miscoding, uh, computer glitches, and simple human error. So every year for 21 okay. years, the SBA has been able to get away with um, claiming that it's just uh, data entry errors. Got it. Yeah. And, okay. And, okay. Good to know. So that's a that's a great place to start. We need some technology. It sounds like that we can help them uh, become more efficient and less error prone. Well, you know, I mean, they, do they do they admit, admit is the wrong word, but is is that the reason that they give anytime it's it's shown? Yeah. Is like, oh, it's data entry errors. Okay, so yeah. like, w- it wouldn't it make sense to sort of fan the flames on that because we know as geeky small business owners that that's a solvable problem if right. someone wants it solved. And, and I, that's a big if, right? It's way easier to just say, oh, it's data entry, data, you know, we classified things wrong. Sorry, we'll get it. We'll try better next time. It's like, well, we can we can actually fix that. We can completely you know what? That's, eliminate that's that. just an excuse. That's not the real problem. And it's no. not the real problem. But no. but what I'm saying is if we if we build it up, I mean, in order to get problems fixed, especially when they're systemic like this and the people that have them know that they have, them, even if it wasn't maliciously created, there's sort of this malicious, um, uh, it, it, it's not intent, but we're, we're, we're just kind of malicious momentum, right? So we have this problem. We know we have this problem, but boy, howdy, I don't know how we're going to change it, right? So it, we, we have to, when, when there's a scenario like that, we have to give somebody the opportunity to save face, right? Otherwise, they'll never be, they'll never join force. So it like, if we can fan the flames on, oh, wait a minute, oh, there's a data, like there's a data like classification problem. Well, let's get a good database company in here to rebuild that stuff and solve this. And now everybody can save face and say, Oh, thank goodness. We have this great small business that came in. I mean, like, like, I don't know how else it gets solved other than that. Right. But, but for the first thing is we have to get the publicity up on, okay, it's a database problem, even though we all know 
that's not actually the problem. Exactly. But yes. right. Yes. But but if we fl- if we fan those flames, then it's like, oh, the public knows we have a database problem. Shoot, we better let them fix this, you know. And and Seems maybe like now, that yeah, with, especially with COVID and how we're all trying to help small businesses recover, it would be a great time to take that sort of uh, end around, if you will. Because I agree with you, Lloyd. There's a lot more to it, but if you can wedge the door open with this, oh, this is the problem you're describing. How do we? What action can we take to solve that part of it? You know, maybe that would maybe that would have an impact. Yeah, you know. Um, I have been in every office in Congress. I've been in every Senate office. I've been in every House office multiple times. I've I've been places in D.C. that, uh, you know, very few people have been. And um, the force against small business in Washington is astounding. It's absolutely astounding. It's one of the biggest, I'll call it a conspiracy that I've ever seen in my whole lifetime. You've got every president since Reagan has uh, approved this. And, um, you know, the Small Business Administration, by the way, their budget has been cut, I think, every year. Yeah. Yeah. You know, for for decades. So, okay. So, so, so think about budgets. I want to ask you as ASBL, you know, as, as an entity, how do, how does, how do you and your team generate revenue to be able to fight these battles and get exposure? I mean, yes. can small businesses join or, or donate? How does it, how does it, that work? You know, in the past we had thousands of members and they all donated, but I found that I was spending all my time talking to them. I didn't have time to, you know, do my job. Yeah. I so see. I got down to I have just a small number of, of companies that support the American small business league. And what we do by the way, these days is primarily we sue the government. So probably 90% of what I do is suing the government in federal court and uh, under the Freedom of Information Act. And when you win those lawsuits, they have to reimburse you for your legal fees. So it's essentially, you know, uh, they're, they're funding, the government's I funding see, American sure. small businesses, That's interesting. right? Well, it's not the government. It's us, by the way. No. <laughs> yeah. well, you know what? The, the government has cut me checks for $1,030,000 in the last... I guess the last two and a half years for lawsuits I've won. Um, wow. I've won 110. I've lost two. Wow. And, um, okay. But uh, I, I find that um, I, I tried to lobby Congress. I tried, I tried everything, by the way. I've, I've tried to lobby Congress. I, you know, I used to go up there and, you know, go from door to door, talking to people, handing out information, you know, and it just was pointless. And yeah. uh, the thing that I found most successful is I just sue them. Yeah. And, um, and it, it, but it seems like that for them, uh, it, it it's almost like just easier to write a check and then they can go back to just doing business as cost to doing business. Yeah. Is like, there, I, when I, you, I, I'm, like I said, I've, uh, there's only, you know, so many things you can do. I'll tell yeah. you, I, I tried to build a large coalition of small business owners and, um, uh, if you, I remember we called, uh, I don't know, 10,000 small businesses one year. Okay. Next year, we called them again, and most of them were gone. I right? Hmm. The turnover okay. rate is, is, is high. Yeah, sure, sure. But yeah, um, that's, what, that, that's what we're doing here, trying to keep everybody going. Yeah. <laughs> We've been, yeah. So you know, um, yeah. I, I went from that to, um, you know, lobbying Congress. And I, and I had some, you know, good luck with that. I really had some great access to people. That's John awesome. Kerry, yeah. when he was chair of the Senate Small Business Committee, would call me and I had his cell phone number. We would talk. And um, but the problem is the big defense contractors, they're the ones that really control, you know, Congress. Right. Um, Fortune 500 firms own the federal government. I saw a study by Think Tank a couple of years ago. It said 95 percent of the time when Congress passes legislation, it's legislation that Fortune 500 firms won. And only maybe five percent of the time, it's what the public wants. So um, right. Right. let's just say this: it's been in it's it's been in the news for twenty one years that the the government is giving small business contracts to Fortune five firms and cheating small businesses. Nothing's changed, right? I've been on. Right. You can't name a news program I've been on. I've been on every. Oh, I've seen it. You no, know, yeah. I've been on yeah. CNN, and ABC, NBC, CBS, Fox, Fox Business, CNBC, MSNBC, right? I've had stories in every newspaper in the country. Um, I'm actually in my home office and they're they're I used to frame them. And there's huh. there's, you know, 
50 of them laying on the floor here, right? So I've been in every newspaper in the country. I've done some of the biggest uh, radio shows and podcasts in the country, and nothing changed. Well, here's right. what changed. Here's one thing changed. <laughs> one thing changed. The government hired an international company to make sure that Lloyd Chapman doesn't go on television we're talking about fraud. So in the summer of 2013, um, I became persona non grata. Um, people used to write stories about me without even talking to me. And so about twice a week, I would Google my name when I was having breakfast, look at the new stories that popped up. And on Monday, I Googled my name. There was a hundred pages of, you know, articles and stories about, you know, my lawsuits, all this stuff. And then on Wednesday, I Googled my name and I was gone, literally gone. There was, there was no mention of me on the internet. I talked to five consultants. They told me the only people who could do that would be Google. At that time, the president of Google's parent company was, I want to say, Eric Schultz, who was yeah. very close friends of President Obama. And um, Google sort of, uh, what's that called? Deplatformed me. Yeah. Back before that term, you know. Yeah. So, before that was a thing. That's yeah, right. It's like you're yeah. back. I mean, when I do a search now, I get, you know, thousands. Yeah. Of yeah. Results well, let's just say this. So that's uh, great. I, um, the biggest lawsuits I've ever won, I've won in the last five to 10 years. Interesting. And I, my last national TV appearance was, I think, was in, was in 2013. Hmm. So I've won um, uh, about like six months ago, I won the largest freedom of information case anyone's ever won in history. There was no mention of it in the national media. I was in court for seven years. Yeah. I spent over a million dollars in legal fees. I won. And it was never mentioned anywhere and the national media. And that yeah, I find I found it on small business trends. This is your, wow. your FOI yeah. thing yeah. In, in June. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I should have been so, so what what can we do? Is there any yeah, how, how in your help? opinion? Yeah, what can we do to help? Is as small business owners individually and as a platform that speaks to other small business owners, what can we do to help? Well, you know, uh, I I was thinking about that. I'm gonna try to get back on CNN by talking to Aaron Burnett. I used to do her show all the time um, when she was, um, um, I think she did, uh, what's it called? Uh, Squawk on the Street on CNBC. And she and I got along great. And I did some great shows with her. And uh, I think I'm going to try to, you know, reach out to Aaron Burnett. So if your listeners will uh, contact Aaron Burnett and say, Lloyd wants to come back on your show. And that's that probably talked about 15 years ago. It's still happening. Still going on. Oh, I've got to awesome. get on the Joe Rogan show also. But um, yeah, I, I think I think that would that be a would good be platform great. for you. That would yeah, be good. I'll tell you yeah. something. If I could get on the Joe Rogan show, I believe that I could bring an end to this. I think I could get another three hundred billion a year in existing federal infrastructure spending back into the middle class, double the number of net new jobs, and cut unemployment in half. I truly do. Yeah, I don't well, know. We're gonna, I don't know that Spotify wants to be talking about that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Remember, Joe. Joe is owned yeah, and controlled by Spotify. Exactly. Now, so. yeah, that's right. Yeah. Well, he, right. I think you know. I I uh, I listen to his show a lot, and um, I think I think he and I would see eye to eye on that. It's. I it's would agree great. with you. I, oh, yeah. I, yeah. I, 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 as we were, you know, bringing you on board here for this, I I assumed you had done Joe's show no. because because you fit into that you know, that mindset so perfectly, uh, oh. but, but obviously you have not. Yeah. You know what? So. I, I have stories that, sh- that are just, you just astounding, just be astounding. What's, what's happened to me. Just, it's just crazy. Yeah. Well, and it, it's, it's, that's awesome. It, it, the thing is, you know, it, to, to your point, a couple of points you made earlier, it, it's a problem that not very many people talk about. And so I'm happy that we've had an opportunity to talk with you about it today. Uh, I really appreciate you coming on the show. We're going to dig a little deeper into this uh, problem, try to help make some connections and promote this, uh, you know, get you, get some additional media coming your way. What's the best way for our listeners to, you know, connect with you to help or, you know, with the American Small Business League? Well, you can go to um, ASBL.com. I've got LloydChapman.com and LloydChapman.net that has all my media appearances. LloydChapman.com has all my uh, uh, video TV appearances. And uh, yeah, let's get me on Joe Rogan and I'll solve this problem once and for all. 
We'll be, we'll be glad to like, help. And Lloyd, sounds like a plan. <laughs> yeah. Thank you again. And you know, if you're a small business owner listening and, and you'd like to get connected with Lloyd or you know, share your story about government contracts that maybe you've been involved in feedback at business Lloyd, thank you again. And uh, we'll certainly uh, hear from you again. I'm sure. Thank you very much. Wow. I, I need, hang on. I just need to go. <sighs> yeah. 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 So, you I know, can tell why he's successful. <laughs> I, well, yeah, that's it. I mean, he he has to be, uh, you know, completely persistent. Like, if he gives up, yeah. that's it. it. It is too bad. It, he's obviously been at this for a very long time. And it's too bad that that he has essentially given up on trying to solve the problem in in more creative ways. And, and I get why, like he, you know, he's tried every way that he could think of. And the only way he feels successful is, is by suing and winning. And obviously he, he knows how yeah. to, he knows how to pick the right things to sue about so that he's certain to win or mo- almost certain to win, y- you know? Sure. And, sure. and that's, Makes I mean, that's great. And it, it, they feel like wins to him. I'm not. I, I couldn't. Yeah. What I couldn't figure out is if it are we moving the ball down the field. I, I don't know. That's the thing. It's it's it, it's so. He's in a political world, right? Mm. And it, that's I, true. I, yeah, I kind of feel like you're when you're you're in that po- political uh, sphere of influence for so long. It's tough to get. I kept trying to come back to that. What is the what's the know, action? How how, yeah. how can we help? And and I don't know that maybe maybe, maybe there isn't. But right. Uh, you know, obviously he's been very successful at what he's doing, and I, I love hearing about this stuff. And I firmly do do agree with him that you know this stuff goes on. Uh, oh, and I, fast, yeah, I'm fascinating sure not, to talk to. I'm sure to. he's not yeah. wrong. Yeah. Oh no, no I think I, he is. Yeah, yeah I don't but, think he is. But, but I like you. You know, we're action all about small business action, guys. What can we do today? And and that's not how politics work. Oh, no, <laughs> clearly that's true. If, right? if he were to solve this problem, he wouldn't have a job anymore. And yeah, a lot of other people too. <laughs> a lot of yeah. other people too. But that's, that's I mean, that's kind of how it goes. Yeah. Great stuff. Yeah. yeah. But actually, I'm, I'm sure he would have a job. It would just be a different yeah. job. You know, he, that, that kind of persistence that, that there's value in that for sure. For sure. Yeah. 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 But uh, again, share your stories with your government contracts. If you've tried to get them, had them, you know, this kind of thing, feedback at businessshow.co. We would appreciate it. Always love to hear from you. Thanks for listening. Always, always. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks so much for listening and uh, keep living that charmed life. Thanks for coming on the show, Lloyd. We'll see you all next time.